Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel and today we are going to be buying a paraffin heater yeah um coming back into fashion a little bit but um i picked this this one up quite cheaply i'll let you know how much it was at the end of the video and this is a corona rx25 i think they're made in japan or china i'm not sure um, but we want something to heat up our our sunroom or garden garden room during the winter so um, it needs ventilation so it's not something you can put in your house um, officially but I dare say people do um, but anyway it's sim better day somebody's had it in their shed um, and just used and abused it and certain parts of it don't work um, the electric ignition doesn't turn on so all I'm going to be using it for is um, to heat up I don't need to anything special I'm going to get one of those long uh, igniters and just stick it in there and set it alight like that uh, it's rated at two and a half kilowatts so it's going to chuck out a fair bit of heat if I can get it working right so follow me on the journey of rebuilding it well not so much rebuilding it but tidying it up a bit because it was a bit grubby and uh, we'll see how we get on see you in a while so i have just purchased this it is paraffin stove um however I, my lovely daughter collected it for me and the person I bought it off of didn't even empty a paraffin. So there's paraffin gone everywhere. So um, getting out of these bags and start taking it to bits. See if it's leaking. Empty the paraffin first. What's left in it. See if it's got any leaks. See if it works. See how we get on. Right, back on it then. I've just taken the fuel supply out and what it is and this part is leaking on the flow tank it looks quite new i don't think it's in a lot of use but it's probably not tight or the valve's not working and consequently when you turn it upside down and put it into the unit it flows out so I'm going to have to uh, empty it out first, give it a bit of a clean up. So remove the top and the front grill, put the screws in a container, um, that's revealed this I've just taken the burner unit out and we're gonna take things out and then um, see if I can replace the parts any parts that might be needed I really need to drain that fuel somehow so that's gonna be the first thing once I get the bits out so I've got uh, Go down to the wick. This, this is the wick going around in a circle, and it looks like it controls it. And the lever down there. Not many settings on it. But, uh, well, that's the kill swap apparently. download the instruction manual I think so to get the back part out that was surrounding the wick I had to release those two lugs there once I got the screws out the side uh, in there um, yeah I need to get front front off I want to get this out. I need, desperately need 
to empty this fuel tank at the bottom. Right, so we're nearly ready to get, looks like the sides come away quite easily. There's a screw down there and the same down the back there, accessible from behind. There and over there. So we're going to undo them and then we're getting nearer to the tank at the bottom. So I thought I'd, I'd just throw the internal bits together just to show you that it works. So that piece there I've taken out of there, um, lit it and given it a few minutes and a lot of heat coming from that. Yeah, a lot of heat. I don't know how I turn it down. Um, but uh, like I say, I'm going to get the manual. And looks okay. Lots of heat. Looking forward to this one. So I'm just about, hopefully I'm just about to remove it off the plate off the bottom. So remove that one there, that screw. And I've got another one just there to take off. I can't do it one handed. But once they're off, that should just lift off and I'll be able to clean the plate up at the bottom. So yeah, there we go. Um, just released it from its, um, from its holder or chassis. I've put it over there for now. Uh, and now I can let some of this paraffin evaporate a little bit and I give everything a good clean up and come back to you when it's clean. Okay, so a little bit of hammerite heat resistant paint around the top ring there just to tidy that up because it was a little bit rusty, it won't last long because it has uh, a fair bit of fair bit of heat to coat with. I've cleaned the bottom plate up, reassembled the burner, if that's what it's called. I'll screw it back into place. So I'm going to reassemble and we'll put the back cover on. Uh, holes in the right spot. Show you this obviously where the screws are gonna go back in and get that on first. So I've just lined things up I've uh, put this heat guide I don't know what that's called actually it guides the, the fuel tank as you drop it down in. So I put that back in. That just um, clipped into two places. There, there, and down in there. I've then put the reflector back in place. And that clips into or slides into a couple of where does that slide into? Oh, well, those two. That that one there. That one there. So that's in the correct place. And put one screw there so far. I've got another few to do there, there, and there. Um, and then we are progressing. So I'm just showing the functionality of this wick. The wick is in the recessed area there and there's a couple of levers there. That bottom one doesn't do a lot. I'll show you why in a minute. Um, but if you push them down, the wick pops up. Did you see that? Push them down. The wick comes up 
you light it and then the bottom one you push back up slightly so this is the once it's lit you bring it back down to that position uh, and then when you want to shut it off you press, press that so down there the wick is up that button I just showed you which goes there shuts it off okay we're at the next stage we've got uh, we've got the all the bits and pieces near enough assembled um, screws back in their rightful places there and these ones up here the, the guard door is on and that just clips into there and then somehow clips in up there it's up there for it to clip into oh, I can see yeah right so it stops children from getting too close I've just got one screw missing which is that one there gone and dropped it on my floor and can't find it uh, so I'm gonna pop in the shed and have a look see what I can find to replace that we've got the uh, front panel on there that shuts it off if I get the camera out you'll see there you go ah coming along so what we're going to do is fill the fuel tank and strange little design I've not come across it before but it is quite common so down the bottom we've got the receiving end and in the center of that is a little pointy bit and that pointy bit pushes the center of that up and releases the fuel down into the bottom fuel storage tank. Um, of course, this goes fuel in there. This goes in there, and then you invert it upside down and drop it in the hole. Um, we're going to put some fuel in. Um, fast kerosene, odorless paraffin. This is from those lovely people. But rye oil down in rye. And we'll see how we get on very shortly. Okay, so I've filled the fuel tank with paraffin. Uh, my big worry was that when you turn it upside down, it was just going to leak out the bottom, but there's no, there's nothing accumulating in the bottom and when you look I don't know whether you can see that or not but, um, it looks looks fairly dry down the bottom there which is where the paraffin would leak into so uh, I'm gonna give it a go so this has got electric ignition but I bought it on the understanding that the electric ignition didn't work so I'm not even going to try and play around with that I'm just going to light it manually now this this burner just sits here and it sits on that ring underneath and you just put the burner in and centralize it by moving that moving that around so the way I'm going to light it is just lift it Put a flame to the wick, let it get started, put the burner down on and, and turn it down and I will get back to you once it's lit. So I don't know if you can see down there is a light. 
There we go, a bit of blue flame. So we'll let it get warm. I mean, it's going to be a bit fumey to start with. No smoke coming up. And then what I do... It should gradually quieten down anyway. Actually, see the uh, fire starting to glow red. It's been lit a couple of minutes now. Mm. Gonna be good. Can't complain of that. Well, once again, it went quite well. Um, not a bad little heater to be honest with you uh, a lot of heat coming off of it it's going to do just what I wanted it to do uh, two and a half kilowatts um, as a guide I think I mentioned it on one of the shots I put earlier on but it uses about a quarter of a litre per hour of paraffin uh, or kerosene um, not a bad little tool I'm quite made up with it. It cost me, no, I'm going to say what they cost new. No, I'm not. I'm going to say what they cost second hand first. Uh, a good second hand one will set you back about 80 quid. And if you want to buy a new version, I'm not sure that you can buy these new now. But if you want to buy a new version, uh, which does exactly the same, you're going to be looking at 200 pounds. Uh, I paid... Fifteen pounds for this one, and got it off Facebook Marketplace, of all places. And uh, my daughter picked it up for me. It wasn't too far away, so um, I think it was a good find, and I'm really pleased with it. Anyway, if you like the video, please um, give us a like, or even better, subscribe. I think the subscribe button's up here, uh, and if you want to see one of my other videos. Uh, there'll be one somewhere along there. Uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.